Welcome back to the Pelvic Health Summit. I am here with Dr. Jessica Drummond, a nutritionist and physical therapist and founder and CEO of the Integrative Women's Health Institute. Dr. Drummond sees patients virtually as well as in Connecticut and treats patients and advises them on all things from nutrition, hormonal therapy, fertility, all the way down to pelvic health and pelvic pain. So we're gonna be covering a lot in this interview. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So let's start, tell me what got you interested in this field. Well, pretty quickly after I graduated from physical therapy school, I began to specialize in women's health in general. Uh, I started in orthopedics and manual therapy, and then I had some patients with breast cancer and also pregnancy, who um, I worked with in the orthopedic clinic. And so I began to narrow my skills into women's health, which then also broadened them into not just women with pain and pregnancy, but women with pelvic pain in general, women with incontinence. And then later, when right after the birth of my first daughter, I had my own hormonal crash, which knowing what I know now, um, probably was related to an Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. So I was chronic fatigue, I had a lot of pain, I had a lot of insomnia, anxiety, panic attacks, things like that. I was getting sick all the time. So I had to go outside of the sort of traditional medical paradigm to find my own healing. And I began to learn a lot more about nutrition and integrative health. And then I turned that lens back to my practice most specifically for women with pelvic pain because there was so much we could do with physical therapy and yet there were these gaps that I felt like nutrition and lifestyle medicine from a real evidence-based perspective could be so helpful. So it was that integration between my training, my clinical experience, and then my own personal experience. So the Integrative Women's Health Institute is online. Can you tell us a little bit more about what patients can expect when they visit your site? Yeah, so for patient or public resources, we have, uh, we have online programs that are available for women with chronic pelvic pain conditions, for women who are preparing for conception, so pre-pregnancy uh, uh, programs and for general hormone balance which can be anything from postpartum recovery we have a lot of women with perimenopausal hormonal imbalances so those are our online programs for women and then for more specific one-on-one -on -one support I do have both a clinical and virtual practice that's great. We I also have a lot of free blogs and things like that. Okay, I know we have a lot of people from around the country and world watching this, so it's really exciting that they can engage and get that information from wherever they are. So let's talk a little bit more about food. And I know that um, I suffer from PMS and food was a big part of that, um, but also food can be very comforting. So the thought of, I'm already in pain, taking my food away seems very daunting. So can you talk a little bit about how you address those concerns? Yeah, so we really don't think of it as taking away food. We think of it as optimizing the functioning of your digestive system. When the digestive system function is optimal, for example, you have adequate stomach acid, you have healthy levels of digestive enzymes, you have good diversity in your gut microbiome, then your variety of foods are so much more flexible. So usually there is a period of time where we're assessing and personalizing the food plan where we use an elimination diet, but we don't really think of it that way. We focus so much on the foods that we want to add to your diet because for most women, you know, especially with chronic pelvic pain, you're, you're thinking IC diet and endo diet and you're trying to take all these foods out. And what happens is we get to the point of malnourishment and almost fear of food. So instead of focusing on that, we really focus on things to add like healing bone broth, things that are high in zinc and glutamine, a wide variety of cooked, easy to digest vegetables. Uh, healthy fats, good quality proteins. So we focus on all of the things to add and then it's it doesn't feel so 
depleting. And we also, I do a lot of coaching work to help women address any emotional triggers. Um, food is very emotional and social. We talk a lot about how to overcome, you know, what if I'm going to dinner at my mother-in-law's house or if I'm traveling or I travel a lot for work. We can address all of those things and still personalize the food plan to help you heal from a physiologic standpoint but also to keep the nutrition as flexible as possible so we don't develop any nutrient deficiencies and because food is good and I want you to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I know that we've interviewed a bunch of practitioners and I know there are a bunch of practitioners watching as well um, who are very focused on the body and physical um, fitness and also surgery. So they might be looking for some more training around the nutrition aspect and the lifestyle aspect. Can you tell us a little bit more about what your institute has to offer for practitioners? Yeah, so for practitioners, we have many online training programs, including uh, continuing education courses in functional nutrition for chronic pelvic pain specifically. We have a year-long health coaching certification program that goes very deep, uh, both in those behavior change communication skills, but also in functional nutrition specifically for women's health, and we have several other programs. We have an endometriosis masterclass and a hormone balance masterclass and things like that where practitioners can either just dive in and you know focus for a week or so on getting a little more information for their practice or really um, immerse with us for more like a year and completely change their perspective sometimes on how they are addressing these issues with a more holistic lens. Fabulous. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to work with you? Um, how do we start and what does that journey kind of look like? So for patients or uh, clients, if we are working virtually, so I do an hour long assessment, you fill out um, some pretty extensive paperwork so we can get a clear view of history and kind of your whole life's history in terms of your system's health. So I address things, functional nutrition standpoint means that we take a look at each system, the digestive system, the immune system, the nervous system, the structural systems. And so we're looking mostly in pelvic pain with starting from, okay, can we absorb the nutrients that we're taking in? Is there a history of autoimmune disease in your life or in your family? Um, is there some challenge with, you know, a lot of women have had multiple courses of antibiotics or antifungals, so their gut microbial environment and thus their vulvovaginal microbial environment is not always optimal. So we look at a, a complete history, really hear the story, and then start with where from that wide holistic lens women are ready to change. Do they want to start with nutrition? Do they want to start with building stress resilience? Do they want to start with better sleep? That's been shown to also help with pain. Maybe changing from very intense exercise to more restorative or more balanced exercise so that the gut microbiome also can, can respond to exercise. So we start where the patient is ready to start. And the good news is when you take this holistic lens, there are levers in all of these areas that the patient can then start to take ownership of and have some tools for doing a lot of self-healing in the context of surgery oftentimes or in the context of physical therapy. But I think it's really empowering for the patient to take this perspective. And it's something they can do. Yeah. Um, so it's super empowering. What's the one thing that um, you, if you could tell all of um, our audience to do right now that could contribute to their well being, what would it be? Turn off your cell phone at 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us or why. More often. So I think a couple of things. One, eat more vegetables. So instead of thinking about what you can take away, eat more blended, easy to digest vegetable soups would be where I would begin with nutrition. Ideally with a solid foundation of a healthy broth, a bone broth or a vegetarian mineral broth. Then the circadian rhythm. So 
women are not sleeping well. And one of the biggest reasons is that we're exposed to a lot of blue light on our phones, on our computers, television. And if we turn that off two hours before bedtime, it, it helps us to have adequate amounts of melatonin, which is a hormone that you need to sleep. Otherwise, the light actually suppresses melatonin and it makes it difficult to sleep. So women who have chronic pain and chronic fatigue need good quality sleep. And one of the easiest ways to start doing that is reducing uh, cell phone, you know, blue light exposure. If you can't, you know, if you have to work until 10 o'clock or something like that, wearing amber glasses uh, is helpful, but it's not as good as just disconnecting a little bit. And the third thing I would say is to spend at least 15 minutes a day outside in nature without sunglasses. Because not only do we need to stop the blue light, light exposure, but we have to have actual exposure to daylight. And many of us are working in offices and you know, not under fluorescent lights, things like that, not really having daylight exposure as well. So sleep is probably, you know, sleep, stress, nutrition are sort of the three legs of the stool that we need to address. Let's talk about stress. Can you tell me a little bit more about um, what your patients are going through in terms of stress and some ways that you can support them through that? Yes, yeah, so at the very core of most women's stress and most people's stress is either relationship type issues, community support issues, or work and financial issues. So specifically for women with pelvic pain, I think it's really important that we address how can you, when you have chronic pain conditions, maintain relationships through the social connections when you can't always stay out late because you're in pain or you can't eat what your friends are eating or you know, that your pain is inconsistent and sometimes you look fine and other times you can't really leave the house, you know, and it can, it can erode that connection. So the way I like to think about this is, is twofold. One, building our body-mind resilience. So start by building the physical resilience to allow you to slowly expand your ability to be more social, to connect with friends. And, then the, and so we can do that specifically by improving sleep, by optimizing nutrition, by getting a support network of even just one or two people that really understand what you're going through. They don't have to have gone through it themselves necessarily, but they have to be very empathetic to the situation and just always be willing to support. When I was really sick, you know, I had friends who would pick me up and take me to lunch. You know, I had to have, I had to be vulnerable enough, vulnerable enough to ask them to pick me up because I was so fatigued. Just getting there, having lunch with 10 people and getting home would exhaust me. So you have to be vulnerable enough to open up to a few people that are very willing to support you. Um, and then slowly but surely rebuild that resilience physically, and then it can be easier to expand um, your network and expand what you can do. But you know, keep it small at first, have a core group of people who are supportive of you, and move forward in baby steps. Because if days you feel good, you really overdo it, then you can find yourself in bed for a week, right? So we have to be really patient with our healing, because often these healing journeys can take a few years. Yeah. Let's definitely talk more about that. I know the term orthorexia, mm -hmm. which if you don't know, it means that you're too stringent and you're too limited in your diet. So it's people who you know, nothing makes me feel good, so I'm gonna stop being gluten and dairy and all of these things that then, you know, it's, it's a source of stress nutrition instead of a source of nourishment. So can you talk a little bit to that? Yeah, I think, you know, if you're going to do any kind of elimination diet, ideally do it under supervision because most of the time women are over eliminating while not taking the supplements, while not eating the foods that actually help support recovery. So you don't want to just take out. We have to be adding things that are going to help heal. Probiotics, probiotic foods, foods high in zinc, foods high in glutamine, foods high in antioxidants. 
Uh, curcumin is really important for endometriosis. There are like nine different mechanisms of curcumin. But when women are thinking about an endo diet, they're thinking about, I can't eat sugar, I can't eat gluten, I can't eat dairy. And while that may be true, you, it's one thing to just be like, I can't eat all of these things. It's another thing to replace them with nourishment. I mean, just this past week, I built like a 30 day food plan for someone that was full of great food. It wasn't, you know, the few things that are not ideal in this moment, but it wasn't about restriction. It was about adding the healing nourishment that we often skip over. That's so important. So tell us a little bit more about the other practitioners you work with. This is such an important piece, the holistic aspect that you bring to the table. So tell us about how you uh, collaborate with other practitioners. So I collaborate all the time with uh, referring patients out to work with endometriosis excision surgeons. I think that is invaluable to the overall healing of endometriosis. And in collaboratively with the work that we do, the surgery is so much more effective, especially it's even better if we can kind of do this kind of healing before and after surgery. Um, and surgery is not always necessary, but definitely having an assessment if and a good skilled endometriosis diagnosis is essential for that population. I work a lot with pain management physicians. Um, you know, sometimes medication is really essential. Um, I work a lot with physical therapists, so for those who don't live close enough to Connecticut or in Connecticut to come and see me physically for the physical therapy piece, I work with physical therapists all over the world. I think every woman with chronic pelvic pain should be working with a physical therapist locally who's skilled. Um, so those are probably the key practitioners. I also do work uh, some with naturopathic physicians who when there are cases of hormone balance that need more than just a lifestyle and medicine and nutritional support, sometimes they need hormone replacement. So either naturopathic physicians or gynecologists who are skilled in hormone replacement therapy. Thank you. So I know that um, in our conversation, you mentioned supplements a few times. I know there's so much out there on the market and it can be very overwhelming. Um, so tell us a little bit more about how you pare down and find the right supplement for each patient. Yeah, so don't go out and buy a lot of supplements and then have this like supplement graveyard that we call it, clo <laughs> closet full of <laughs> supplements that you're never gonna take or you take ones so and they don't help. So again, we have to take that systems approach. So we start with digestion. Do you have enough stomach acid? If not, there are supplements that can support that. Do you have enough digestive enzymes? If not, there are supplements that can support that. And for example, those um, you know secretions can your body can start to restore those secretions, but they require a lot of physical energy. So if you've been chronically sick or chronically fatigued, you need that, you may need that support for a little while. So I think of them as like crutches for the digestive system, right? Maybe not forever, but maybe for six months to a year. Uh, in some cases forever. Uh, probiotic supplements, the strain really matters. The source of the probiotic really matters. So, you know, work with a skilled practitioner. Don't just, you know, go to Rite Aid and start taking, you know, probiotics because they probably aren't going to be effective if you do it that way. Um, similarly, antioxidant supplements can be really helpful. Things like curcumin and resveratrol and quercetin can be very helpful. But, you know, again, it's, we, it's best if we're personalizing these things for each woman, depending on what she needs. And there are some tests we can run, sort of lab tests, but in, which can help that even more, you know, sort of guide the, the choice of supplements. But we want to think through from a systems approach where to begin. So we usually begin with digestion, digestive lining, most about 70 to 80 percent of the immune system is wrapped up within the digestive system so as healthy as those two systems are the better emerging resources really research is really showing a connection between things like the gut microbiome and endometriosis there's bi-directional communication between the gut microbiome and uh, the mitochondria of the cell. So every cell is affected by the gut microbiome. So that's a really good place to start. And then finally, 
support for hormones, so definitely stress resilience, support for healthy cortisol levels, and things like broccoli extract are really simple and can help with estrogen metabolism, for example. Awesome. Thank you so much for all that information. I like I'm about to go Google everything and go to your site. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, summer's coming up. What foods are there that you kind of can be like, these foods are really great to maybe experiment and incorporate. Obviously, every woman's different and meeting with you or another practitioner who can create a very you know personalized plan is best but overall what are some foods that we can look forward to and possibly try and see how we feel i would start with juicing so healthy fresh vegetable juices primarily you could put a little bit of fruit lemon ginger some green apple um, i would also add fresh fish from good quality sources um, good and omega-3 fats which we know is very helpful for pelvic pain and menstrual cycle pain. So if you, if you start eating more fish and more juiced or cooked steamed vegetables, that's a great place to start for the summer. Um, this might be a silly question, but what would be a good place to get fish? For those who, like me, who I'm like, is it Whole Foods? There's a whole, which one? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so fish is tricky, not because fish is inherently bad, but because unfortunately, 100% of our oceans are polluted mostly with heavy metals. So you, the cleanest possible fish, you know, Whole Foods does have cleaner fish. Uh, Environmental Working Group talks a bit mm. about healthy fish, but there's also the aquarium of Marin, California or something, you can look that up. But um, certain regions do have cleaner fish. There's a company called Vital Choice that does get cleaner sources of fish, but you know, you can start by talking to the fishmonger at Whole Foods or a local fisherman to see where, you know, what's going on in your area. But the challenge with fish is the pollution of where the fish are grown. So you always want wild fish and ideally from a source of water, a body of water that is relatively less polluted. Thank you. That's like really good. I've, I haven't thought of that before of where to get your fish so other than wild yeah, um, but wild. in what part of the wild <laughs> that's a good question great so um, before we wrap up can you tell us a little bit more about how we can get in touch with you and where we can find you online um, the website is integrative women's health institute.com everything is there the professional level of training our patient and public programs and you can also connect with my practice there as well Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now I'd like to hear from you. Please share with us one takeaway from the interview in the comments below. Give us a like and share this group with someone who you think will benefit. Thank you.